what is the, J the JVM or the Java Virtual Machine? So in order to answer that, uh, we first have to go and explain what a compiler is. So if you remember, uh, the CPU in your computer implements one particular instruction set. Right? So that is the programming language that the CPU implements itself. Uh, you can write in the early computers, uh, people would just write their code using this instruction set. And those were we call assembly language programs. So the assembly language is basically almost just like the instruction set. It has a few little niceties, so it uses LDA uh, instead of, say, the number 62 uh, for the load accumulator function. So assembly languages turns the machine code, which is just numbers, and gives them nice little mnemonics like this one. But it doesn't do much more than that. It's still basically just the instruction set of the CPU. So people wrote, though, uh, and still do write assembly language programs. Uh, but this is very low level. So if you want to do something as simple as, say, print hello world, you would have to say, OK, load the letter H. OK, put that letter over there so it gets displayed. OK, load the letter E, put it over there. Load the letter L, put it over there. Load the other letter L, put it over there, and so forth. So quickly, people realized that was very tedious. And they thought, well, maybe we can come up with some higher level programming language uh, that we can then turn into this assembly language. So at first, they did this by themselves. Um, let me write up here. So we call those higher level languages. And uh, basically, these are all the programming languages that you've heard of, like Java, C, C++ language. So uh, one example would be the C programming language. And that C programming language then gets turned into assembly language. What they did was they wrote another program called the compiler. So the compiler is a program that takes as input a C program and outputs the assembly language or the machine code that then runs in the CPU. So and that's the way you, it works for C and C++. These are compiled languages uh, that get fed to a compiler, which is just another program. And that program turns this program into an assembly language program. There's also uh, interpreted uh, an in interpreters. An interpreter is very similar to a compiler. Uh, so a compiler takes C or C plus plus and turns it actually into you know a dot o file, um, and then this file has all the assembly language and that file runs. Uh, an interpreter takes in the language, say Perl, it's an interpreted language. Um, the interpreter takes it in, reads the program, and as it's reading it, uh, it turns it into assembly language and then reads it again, turns it into assembly language. Uh, so it never creates this compiled file. So this, this file here contains assembly language. And uh, so the difference is a compiler, you do this step once, you get your assembly language file, and then you run this file um, any number of times. Uh, so you don't have to do this part. With an interpreter, interpreted language, you take the file, you turn it into assembly code, and you run it. Uh, but you never create this file. So next time you run the same program, you're again going to have to turn the Perl file into assembly language. So thus, compiled programming languages are faster. Because once you get the assembly language file, this is you don't have to redo that first step every time. You just do it once, and you're done. OK, so 
those are compilers and interpreters. Uh, the, what the Java people did is a little bit different. They built this the Java virtual machine, which sits right about here, right? So the Java virtual machine uh, takes as input what they call byte codes. And in interprets them in, into the uh, assembly language. And uh, those bytecodes are really very similar, but not identical to the instruction set, right? So the idea is that the Java virtual machine is like a CPU. So a CPU implements an instruction set. The Java virtual machines implement these bytecodes programming language, which is very, very similar to the instruction set that, uh, say, the Intel CPU implements, uh, but not exactly, right? So there's a few little differences. So because it is very similar, that means that it can do this part really fast, because turning bytecodes into assembly language is really easy. So it can do that really fast. And the advantage is uh, if you change your CPU, um, you can then just build another JVM, so say that JVM works for this CPU, you can build another JVM that works for this other CPU over here. Uh, and both of them take as input bytecodes, therefore uh, Java can run in different computers. And the part over here that's missing, so, is the part that takes your Java program, and we run that through the Java compiler. And this generates bytecode, right? So when you're running Eclipse, when you hit the compile button, it takes your Java file that you wrote and runs the Java program, that's the Java compiler. And that creates the bytecodes. These go into your dot class file. Right? Uh, and uh, your dot class file contains bytecodes. Then when you run that, then the JVM runs, picks up those bytecodes and runs them and turns them into uh, your local instruction set. So the JVM is a two-step process, or if you want, if you like, you create this dot class file, and then that dot class file is not is not a dot o file, so it's not written specifically for your CPU but it's written in bytecodes, which is very similar to your CPU. So that means you still need this JVM virtual machine to interpret those and turn them into a language of your own CPU. So if you look, um, here's the Java file. Uh, here is my workspace. I have a program here. I have the bin and the source folder. Uh, if I go into the source folder, you see my Java file. Uh, that is just a text file. It contains a little program. If I go back to the bin folder, because I already ran, I compiled it. So cd bin. Uh, I have the class file, and you can try to look at it. Um, but it's not going to work very well because it's binary. Um, but these are the bytecodes that represent the program. 